I just wolfed down a cough drop, so we will make it through this. I had another sermon already, but especially after the VBS meeting this morning where I lost my voice after about seven minutes, I shortened the sermon, made a different sermon, and I think very aptly titled it, Sick. <laughs> um, so I've had, a, I've had a couple things the past three weeks. Um, couple, you guys see me wearing my glasses. I never wear my glasses out in public. Not that I care about them. I just prefer contacts. Well, a couple weeks ago, I was having really bad issues with my left eye. It, just, it would keep watering. It hurt. It was sensitive to light. And I've got a, a history of eye problems, and I couldn't ever remember which eye. Turns out it was the other one. But I went into the eye doctor two weeks ago, I think, and they said, well, yeah, you've got an ulcer on your eye. Didn't know you could have those. Uh, so they gave me some powerful antibiotic eye drops, told me, don't, dare, don't you dare put contacts in. So I'm going in tomorrow for them to recheck it and give me some new contacts that hopefully should work. So I go to the doctor for that. Then we have people visit two weeks ago, and we find out after they get here that they were sick. And about a week and a half ago, Mandy starts getting sick. And then about a week ago, I start getting sick, and then our kids get sick. So it's just been a lot of fun, but what I take, I take things from what's going on in life to come up with good sermon ideas. So I titled this one Sick, and our main passage is going to be in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, uh, and we'll look at verses 15 through 20 with a main focus on verse 17. But Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 15, says, And it happened that he was reclining at the table in his house, and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many of them, and they were following him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why is he eating and drinking with the tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and they came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, While the bridegroom... Uh, is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast, can they? So long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast in that day. So let's reread verse 17 again. And hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So just a few preemptive things here. When he heard this, they weren't asking Jesus this question. It says in verse 16, it says they said to his disciples. They didn't even bring it up to Jesus, but they were talking to his disciples and said, why is he doing this? Why, why is he doing this thing that doesn't look good? It shouldn't be done. We've got a problem with it. But Jesus heard it and said, it's not those who are healthy who need a physician. Yes, that is very true about humans, literally. When we are sick, we go to the doctor. I went to, I'm the only one in my family that went to the doctor because I figured it was a virus, but I figured I'd go. And they told me, yeah, you don't have anything that we can tell, so go home and rest. Um, but we go to the doctor when we're sick, when we don't feel well, because sometimes they have answers. Uh, most of the time, they'll give you good advice to help you heal, but you go to the doctor when you're sick. So Jesus makes that point here, but then he continues, but those, or sorry, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So sinners in their natural state, sinners just being sinners, have a need of repentance. Uh, just a couple, couple different verses here uh, emphasizing this point. Isaiah 55, 7 says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So he, he uses the, the uh, 
qualifiers of unrighteous man, the wicked, but it says, let him return to the Lord. It says, he, he will have, God will have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. When we come to God, when we need it, when sinners come to God, he will abundantly pardon us uh, because that's what he's told us that he will do. We need to seek him and to follow what he has told us to do. But when we come to him, we can receive that repentance or we can re receive that forgiveness through our repentance. In Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8 it says, therefore, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. We've discussed, we've studied before what bearing fruit means. If you're not doing the right things, if you're not doing the things you're supposed to, you're not going to continue bearing fruit. You're going to wither up and die. But it's continue or bear fruit in keeping with repentance. So when we repent, when we ask for forgiveness, for repentance, we continue to bear fruit. And then finally in Acts 2.38, I'm sure we have this memorized, we've heard it thousands of times, but it's when Peter is giving a sermon and telling them all the things that they need to do, the things that they've been doing that they need to stop doing, giving them examples and stories from the Old Testament, stories of things that had happened. Uh, back up to verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? They recognized something was wrong. They needed repentance. They said, What do we do? Verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So sinners in their natural state, sinners, by definition, sin. They... they thing that they need is repentance so that they can be right with God, so that they can, as it says here in Acts, so that we can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they have a need of repentance, but they also cannot repent all by themselves. They can't say, well, I'm sorry to myself for the sins that I've done, and that's good enough. That, that's, not, that's not how that works. Uh, as, we, as I said, we're kind of focusing on Mark 2.17. Maybe. Um, again, just reading it one more time. And hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So there he says, It is not the healthy. So it's those who are sick who need a physician. Now, yes, the doctor did tell me to go home and get some rest, but they still told me what it wasn't. They told me it wasn't the flu. They told me it wasn't strep. They told me it wasn't COVID. So they told me that, hey, you're good with those things. All you need is rest. So here, so I, I went, to, went to the doctor, and here he is saying, it's the sick who go to the doctor. People who are healthy that don't have anything wrong don't go to the doctor. So we make the connection there that they need a savior. The sinners... To, to repent, they can't do it by themselves. They need a Savior. But the really, really cool point here in the end of verse 17 said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. What does he say there? He says that he calls them. Jesus calls to them. Jesus calls for sinners. <coughs> he calls not for the righteous, but for sinners. He knows that they are the ones that need the help. He knows that they are the ones that need to come to repentance, and he is here to call them. So going on that point of they are called by Jesus, um, Jesus coming into the world, doing everything that he did while he was here on the earth, um, what he was here to do. He was here to call and convert sinners and bring them to repentance, to make them realize what they had done, what, how they were living, that it was not the right way to live, and that they need a repentance. That that was the, that was the only answer uh, that they had that was the right answer. 
Um, so who's it talking about? Back up to verse 16. Um, it says, when the scribes and the, of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors. Stop there. It says sinners and tax collectors. We've discussed this before, but tax collectors back then were not very highly looked on. Tax collectors today aren't really either, but uh, <laughs> they're a lot less corrupt than they were back then because how they made their money was they would have to have a certain amount that they would bring back to the treasury, but in order for them to make money, they would overcharge people, and that's how they made their money. And if you didn't pay them, you got thrown in prison. So they weren't looked upon in a positive light at all. But uh, it says he was eating with sinners and tax collectors. found it kind of interesting. This is the New American Standard. Uh, it says sinners and tax collectors. In the King James, it says publicans and sinners. Now, don't get confused on the order of those. It's not saying tax collectors equals to sinners and sinners is equal to publicans. Um, that makes sense in my mind. Hopefully it does in yours. Um, but it's saying the same thing. People who are out in the public, people who are out doing things with people, interacting with them, <coughs> excuse me, in, a, in whatever light, a negative or a positive light, that they are the ones that need to be called by Jesus, that need to be brought to repentance. So he's going and intentionally being around these people so that he can teach them and bring them to the will that he has been sent by his father to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, again, Christ coming into the world, we are called. What we, what we can take from this is how we are called, how sinners are called, and we all, we all started somewhere. There was a point in our lives where either we were younger children realizing what sin was, realizing that we had sin, and that that sin would ultimately send us to hell unless something was done. Unless we repented of that sin, we knew that it wouldn't be good for us. Or if you were maybe converted later in life, you came to that understanding of, I have sinned, this is the right answer, Jesus is the right answer. He came to this earth <clears throat> to bring people, and we are called by Jesus. Jesus came down here specifically for us. He didn't come down here for just a handful of people. He came down here for everyone. He wants everyone to follow him, to understand what he did, and partake in the promise that he has given through his death, burial, and resurrection he knows that not everybody's going to partake of that because of how the world is, of how cunning the devil is, but that doesn't lessen how much he did to come for all of these people. So we are called by Jesus to be converted. We want to go from our life, life and sin to a saved life through uh, redemption, through repentance, and through God's grace. I skipped ahead to my last point, to be brought to repentance. So we are, we are called by Jesus to be converted, to be brought to repentance. So that's all talking about sinners. Well, in case you didn't know, we're sinners. Thankfully, though, we have, we've done what we need to to be forgiven of that through repentance. <coughs> um, but what about those that we come into contact with in the world? Um, Jason has his call to action. I've decided to call mine the action point. Um, so Jesus is calling sinners. Jesus is calling all of us. We were all once sinners before we came to him, before we were brought, brought to him through repentance, through our confession of him, through our baptism. But he is calling sinners. That includes people who don't know him, either by choice or by they've just never heard of him. They've never had anybody explain who Jesus is, what the Bible is, what it says, and what they need to do. So the question is, what will you do? God is all-powerful, but we are here to spread his love to McPherson and the world to share his love and his message with everyone around us. We need to go out and find 
those sinners, those people that don't know Jesus. Jesus wants them. He is seeking them, but they don't know that he's looking for them. They may not, may not, there they may actively be going against him trying to find them and to grab a hold of them, or they may not know about him at all. So just think about as you're going through your, through this next week and even further, what can we do to help those people find Jesus? Jesus, when he was on the earth, ate with sinners and tax collectors. They are the ones that needed his help. They are the ones that needed his message. And we should also bring those, uh, bring those people to him uh, so that they can have partake in the same promise that we partake in uh, through his death, burial, and resurrection. So we always offer an invitation um, asking this question, what will you do? Um, maybe you do this. Maybe this is something that you do on a daily or a weekly basis that is just kind of second nature to you. But think about intentionally trying to do this. Go and find someone and ask them, hey, can I talk to you about Jesus? Or if it comes up in conversation, but what will you do? Uh, we also want to offer this time that if you need prayers from the church, if you have anything that you would like uh, prayers for, uh, any confession, anything that you need uh, brought before the congregation that we can help you and pray for you, please come while we stand and sing.